The job of the teaching assistant is constantly evolving and developing your professional skills is more important than ever. We've gathered five teaching assistants from different schools with different levels of experience and specialities to talk about how their practice has developed over the years. I no longer am an LSA. I, I'm sort of like freelance in the school really. I do um, early literacy support, additional literacy support and springboard which is maths. I started as an LSA as well, um, supporting a child that had dyslexia and autism. Um, still supporting a child that has autism and again I do science group and literacy and numeracy group as well. I do ALS, I mm. do literacy, numeracy, science yeah. and I also have small groups of children uh, ranging from reception right up to year six. I started off as an LSA where I support an autistic boy but because the title's changed to a TA it's, I've become a TA now. I've been a TA for 12 years, I think it's 12 years, and um, I'm much more in a classroom base going up the school. In this programme, we'll focus on common problem areas that arise for both new and experienced TAs in their practice. Expert advice will come from Lambeth LEA's TA consultant, Melina Allison. Got a question here to do with planning. I wish my teacher would let me know what she's doing every day. We never have time for this. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this in your time as a teaching assistant in schools. Never finding the time to meet with your class teacher to discuss what she'll be doing in the lesson next day. Absolutely crucial. Can't stress it enough. You really do need to know what it is you'll be doing with your pupils. You need to be clear about the learning goals. You need to be clear about the key objectives and certainly what resources and prior learning the children already have. So speak to your class teacher, be proactive, get those lesson plans, ask the teacher to be very clear about what bits you'll be actually taking. Maybe she can highlight it or maybe give you a copy of her plan so that you can go away, perhaps write a mini plan so that you're clear and you've rethought the lesson and exactly what you'll be doing. Last year, um, I've had to go in before school started to liaise with the teacher to find out what's going to be happening for the planning for that morning. That's a similar situation, going early and you know you get a highlight of the day, what's going to happen. I make suggestions myself, which is something I would never have done to start with, you know. I've got some ideas, how do you think about, what do you think about that? I mean yeah. they value what you say yeah, and they, they get do. you more involved in, yeah. you know, in their planning and things that they set out for the children. These days as you're more allies, you're there to support each other, yeah. to help each other out and if you have a good relationship that can work really well. Mm -hmm. You might have a bright idea, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I've just started as a TA, I'm worried about behaviour management and what the class teacher will expect of me. Quite a common question for a lot of our TAs. Now, all schools have have behaviour policies and it's absolutely important as teaching assistants that we're familiar with, with those policies so that we can ensure that we're supporting the whole school in terms of supporting pupil behaviour. You need to discuss with your class teacher clear sanctions and rewards that you can independently carry out. So maybe you can ask a child to move or to sit at another table, maybe you can give stickers or maybe ticks. Whatever it is, make sure that you are clear because obviously it will support the children in knowing exactly what your role is in terms of you managing um, misbehaviours. Sometimes the behaviour may be of a serious nature which you may have to refer to your class teacher and maybe decide together what, what need act, further action needs to be carried out. I remember say about five or six years ago, maybe a little bit more, Children, certain children would come into the school, they'd kick chairs, they'd swear, and they'd say to you, you're only a, a, a helper, I'm not gonna listen to you. So the difference now is that we can say, if you don't do this, 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 and this happens. At the moment, uh, we have got a few <coughs> lively children in the infants, and that's quite hard work. Fortunately, I'm not in that playground. You know, whether it's the teacher or the TA on duty, you know, it doesn't make any difference. You approach the child and you sort of deal with it. We also have slips which says, I caught you doing the right thing. It goes in a box yeah. in the classroom and at the end of the week, they get a super prize if they get picked out the yeah, box. And the children out, yeah. love it. Another question I'm often asked by my teaching assistants is that I'm working with a teacher, sometimes NQTs, 
where perhaps then haven't got a handle on the discipline in the class and sometimes I find myself taking over the lesson which I'm not often very happy or comfortable in doing. What I would suggest to you if you find yourself in that position is perhaps take some time again to have a a one-to-one -one with your class teacher. Maybe they're not even aware that there's a problem. So say to her, I've noticed every time maybe you're writing something on the board or you've turned around, two children or one child in particular always does X. Maybe they're talking, maybe they throw something, maybe they interfere with another child. You've noticed it. It's your job to, to bring it to the attention of your class teacher and possibly offer a solution to that. Maybe offer to sit near those children maybe obviously to have some resources so that you can share with the children while the whole class teaching is taking place. Whatever the situation, make sure the messages about the behaviours are clear and that you can evaluate and review systems you might have in place to improve the environment of your classroom. When you're a TA, you can actually act as another set of eyes and ears and you can see what's going on that the teacher who's teaching can't see. Yeah. And you can see the children who are struggling and hiding and they need help. You can just spend a bit of time whilst the teacher's dealing with another group. I think TAs can form a really nice, good, lovely relationship with children these days. If they can't approach a teacher at a certain time in a yeah, session, they, they know us. that they come to us, even if it's just to go to the loo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they think, oh, the teacher is saying no. I'll go to uh, I'll go to Sheila because uh, <laughs> she'll yeah. say yes. Yeah. 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 They're more likely to come to the TA oh, than yeah. the teacher yeah. because the teacher's actually obviously up near the, the board working. Yeah. You know, you're just that little sort of intermediary step. Some teaching assistants feel a little bit hesitant working with NQTs. Often they feel that NQTs haven't had the experience in, in, in managing teaching assistants and perhaps underestimate the work that they can do. What I'd like to say to you is that they are highly qualified, they may be new and they maybe haven't had the experience of working with a teaching assistant before and really it's, it's your way of actually showing how well you can work with a new member of staff. Possibly you can support them by showing them the sorts of things that TAs do in your school. Importantly, show them what you can do if you'll be working with them. And don't feel for whatever reason that the NQT would perhaps undermine you. You've got to be absolutely proactive and clear about what it is you do in, in, in the classroom so that you can support her with the management of the children and her new class. I think they are as nervous mm. as we are nervous if they, it's never had somebody sitting all day, you know, in their, in their classroom. When you've got another grown-up in the classroom, it's like you're being observed and, you know, you're sitting there. Although you're supporting your child, you're sitting there and you're watching the teacher. It is difficult for them to sort of, you know, see this grown-up on know. the side sitting Especially there. Especially a new teacher as well. We don't want to criticise, we don't want to judge them, do we? We're there to help them, you know. But then when you've been in the school longer than they have, yeah. you're more familiar with the children. They also appreciate how we do the job because they're new and uh, they, you know, you hit on each other. They're quite pleased that we're there. Yeah. <laughs> In class, I do small group work, but find no time to feed back to the teacher about how they've got on. How disappointing, especially when you've planned a lesson, it's gone really well, and no one to share it with. What I've suggested to teaching assistants would be really proactive. If your class teacher doesn't ask how things went, you could perhaps devise a chart with the group, names of the children in your group, and possibly put a tick if things went very well with that child or if that child needs a little bit more help or consolidation maybe you'll use another symbol for that and certainly if the child needs more support you would feed that back to the class teacher. It has to be obviously of use to your teacher and yourself so that it will obviously inform future lessons, future planning. Um, of course nothing beats that one-to-one -one chat with your class teacher um, certainly concerning um, the format of, of subsequent lessons. I think when I actually started five years ago, there was no record keeping whatsoever. Um, it was like you go in there, you do your job in the classroom, and then you're out half three, same as the children. You know, you're working with children, you know how they've got on, maybe a group of children, and the teacher will say, well, can you put that at the back of their sheet? You know, how they've done, how they've achieved, you know, did they do it in enough time or something? You know, you're making an observation on how they've got on, which, you know, is valuing your, you know, how you see it. And we, we do have uh, yeah. opinions and well, insights. We, yeah. And also we have maybe a different reaction to some children. You know, different people, it helps to 
sort of even everything out. Our role has changed that we're much more interactive in all the aspects of a class. I know there are lots of teaching assistants out there that have had very little training since you started your job. Maybe you had the induction training at your LEA and have had very little or none since then. Believe you me, there's lots of training out there for teaching assistants and certainly with the developments over the last few years, that has increased quite a lot. You need to pick up the telephone, phone contact your LEA, you need to speak to your line manager, use your appraisal times to discuss future development needs, there's tons of stuff out there. NVQs, their degrees, there's further training for teaching assistants, specialist courses, there's numeracy and literacy courses. You really just need to contact your LEA and your line managers. I completed an NVQ too, and at my age I thought I did really well because it's something I would never have done before, but I was encouraged to do that. And it's ma it makes you feel good about yourself, especially more confident working in the school too. I of went course. on um, speech and language course. Oh, just speak and language. Yeah. yeah. Um, just like individual. Yes, like yes. If it's not speech and language, um, it'll be at early years for early like, years, yes. reception um, children. But oh. yeah, Some of them are a little bit scary, especially the higher level teaching assistant. I mean, we're, we're, we're sort of thinking, thinking about that, going that for it, but it's, it's a little bit scary. They want a level three out of you. Teachers want to be out of class for a certain amount of time of, of yeah, a week. Like and then time, you yeah. will take over the class. So how about that? That would never have happened sort of 10, 14 years ago, would it? We often come across a lot of teaching assistants that are feeling a little bit disaffected in their jobs. They're feeling at a low, they've maybe been working for quite a number of years and feel as though, well actually nobody's really acknowledging the really good work that I do. Sometimes I'm away from the class teacher, I'm outside and, and nobody really sees or appreciates, apart from the children, how well things are going. What I would suggest is maybe that you speak to your line managers directly. As part of your professional development, all teaching assistants are entitled to appraisals. And those appraisal meetings are highly positive, certainly identifying areas that would support you in your job, certainly identifying training needs, possibly having a look at your in-class practice and identifying areas that perhaps you need further, that you need to further develop. When I first started, I always felt maybe oh, the teacher knows best and she knows mm. what she's doing and I shouldn't be saying things like that because I don't really know. I'm not as good as the teacher. But as I say now, it's, it's very different. Yeah, I think it has changed. I think before, before when I used to actually go into the classroom, everything would be actually set on the table and I don't think you had time to actually ask the teacher what you're going to do. Um, but now um, I can actually go about how much you're going to access, you know, access the, um, the subject. Because you are the ally, you are the other you know, set of eyes and ears mm. and hands-on person to help. And yes. also I think with the parents too, you know, they feel that they can approach you and chat to you about their little boy or their little girl. You know, you've got this little boy who's probably lost in 30 children, but, you know, have him in a small group, he might come up with something yes. and you're amazed yeah. that, you know, he does have the knowledge somewhere, but yeah. with 30 other children in the class, he just can't put his hand up, whereas he might do when he's in a small setting. We are valued by everybody. <coughs> We're vital these days, I vital. think. <laughs> yeah, we're very, very important. Yeah, I mean, what would the teachers do well. without us? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's teamwork. Yes. Teamwork. Teamwork. teamwork.